Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is time to get our work session started. Madam Clerk, could you read the roll? Mr. Jacobs. Mr. Morrissey. Here. Mr. Powers. Here. Mr. Lind. Here. Mr. Amos. Here. Mr. Schmidt. Here. Mr. Welper. Here. Motion to approve the agenda is proposed. Motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Uh, Paul, you're are energized and ready today. I am ready. Paul Hutting, Leisure Services Director. All right. Um, what we're talking about tonight is an ordinance amendment that we're proposing to put on the agenda for next week. And by virtue of it being an ordinance amendment, um, it's proper to spend some time with you in a work session. It's not a, in my opinion, it's not a major change. The Leisure Services Commission has approved it. But uh, a real quick history, if you go back to 2010, we, at that point, the Leisure Services Commission and the council approved allowing certain types of watercraft on lakes where there were no boats allowed. Primarily the Greenbelt Lake off of Martin Road was the main um, lake where we had requests from people they wanted to go out in their kayaks and fish, basically. Well, that's been fine, but uh, since that time, manufacturers have come out with a new not so new anymore, but a, an item called a paddleboard. And a paddleboard does not meet the definitions of our previous ordinance as changed in 2010 as being legal to, to uh, operate on the lakes. We feel it's a safe and legal, or safe and should be a legal type of um, enjoyment. Uh, they're being used all across the state, all across the country. Um, so really, in a nutshell, that's what we're talking about is changing the ordinance um, basically just tweaking it enough to make those paddle boards legal um, Todd Deerfield worked with Joe Leibold on this and uh, Dave Zellifer drafted the the ordinance that's in your packet so are the ordinance change so that's really all I have if you have questions for any of the three of us uh, shoot yes, sir. yes sir but on the same time, aren't you banning some types of flotation devices? Yes, um, and inflatables are kind of the, the main thing that we're not, we don't want people out there on beach toys. We don't want to circumvent the no swimming ordinance. And there are reasons for the no swimming ordinance in these bodies of water and our, our loss control, um, people would not want to see that change. So. Anything that's like a beach toy or an air mattress, that type of thing is not legal. Can a tube, is a tube, people like to tube down the cedar sometimes? Tubes are not. Is that covered? They're backing me up. They would not be allowed in they this. Be allowed. They are allowed in the river, but that's not our jurisdiction. Gotcha. What's that, is that gonna cause, do people tube in a lake? I don't, you know, I don't know. We don't feel that it's necessary and we haven't had a lot of, um, complaints about not being able to do that. Most folks really are in these kayaks and paddle boards. Sure. Uh, uh, Mr. Hody, have, have people been trying to use paddle boards there? And, yes. Or other lakes in Waterloo and it's been a problem? Yes, and I don't know if Todd or Joe maybe could, we've, we've had some complaint calls, so. You want to address that? Captain Joe Libel, Police Department. We do get a few complaint calls occasionally um, for people being on paddle boards or in kayaks that don't meet the definition of a, a licensed kayak. There's a state law that requires, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's 12 feet or longer, requires a license. Well, the kayak manufacturers are smart and they make some that are smaller than that. So you don't have to buy a license and people who don't want to pay the license buy a 10 foot kayak. So they haul it in their car, it's easier to move around. So the ordinance would allow for, I think it says, uh, items used for nav water navigation. We got the wording from the DNR. It eliminates a lot of the other stuff and just allows it for manufactured items kind of thing. So then that would include those smaller kayaks? Yeah, the smaller kayaks. There's some, I, I'm not a kayak expert, but my understanding is there's some that are only about this big and then you hook them to an air pump and they fill up. Um, it would allow them because they're designed for navigation on the water. Okay, Thanks. Else for questions? The only other point I'll make is it does still, the ordinance would still require a PFD. So anyone out on that lake would be required to have a PFD. For those that are looking, PFD? 
personal flotation device. And for those sitting up here. <laughs> Paul, Paul, just out of curiosity, what's the, I mean, what's the rationale behind what you do allow and don't allow? I mean, is there logic here? Or what, what's it based on? Are there studies? A better way to say, are there studies it, done? Or is it's, I mean, you, you allow, it, it's why really, you, why what, you don't allow what we're trying to allow, as Joe just said, are manufactured watercraft mm -hmm. that we feel are safe to use in this environment and wouldn't be, what we're not allowing would be, as I said before, water toys or something that's not designed as a, a watercraft. So that would basically be the same thing as swimming if you're out there on an air mattress or a, an inner tube. So it's manufactured watercraft that, and that's basically the logic, unless these guys can add anything to that. Uh, one one other question, Mr. Hudding, and that is, say you were out uh, at um, East Lake, and doesn't East Lake have a beach area? Yes. Okay, and say that you had a inflatable kind of, like, either mattress or, I guess there's these, um, like, inflatable little boats um, that have oars and everything like that. Would those, those would be not allowed on that area even though they have a swimming area well this this ordinance does not address the cedar river or brinker lake uh, those are both um, completely regulated by the dnr and so oh. the dnr the only entry point to brinker lake is in georgia state park and they do all the regulations and the and they're posted there and they do the enforcement so we're not council isn't uh, attempting to address brinker lake at this point and Paul, did I hear you say that our insurance carrier also is encouraging us to not have swimming flotation devices, swimming correct deals and correct. Okay. Anyone else? So we ask Good. that you put this on the agenda for Monday if you're comfortable with okay. it. Thanks, Paul. Joe. Uh, we're going to move right into uh, tip certification but I see no one is here at the moment so we'll just sit tight we're about six minutes ahead of schedule I'll go see if I can find it all right thank you
It is 4 o'clock p.m. Uh, we are still in uh, work session and it's 4 o'clock, so we're waiting on our TIF presentation. So, no. Uh, uh, okay, Michelle Wiegner, Chief Financial Officer, and Nola was afraid to read numbers to you, so I'm going to do that part. <laughs> you should have all the documents attached to Nova's now. Um, they may not be attached to the work session. That they, they may be attached to the regular council agenda, though. Kelly, they're not on the work session, are they? They're not. They're on okay. the regular agenda. Okay. So the first one we'll talk about is Crossroads. That is our newest TIF district. And at this point, we are, we've incurred total debts, and that's pretty much through June 30th of 16. And some of these are future rebates, so they haven't been paid yet, but we've agreed to pay them. And that total is $1,364,724. That didn't come out right. How about $1,364,724? That's better. <laughs> um, we have, since this TIF district was new in 2016, there was no revenue through 16, but on exhibit B, the second page of the cumulative report, you can see that we have started receiving revenue in fiscal 17. We have a, an interesting situation in Crossroads in that one of our large property taxpayers has repeatedly been protesting their value and it's <coughs> declining. So we expect the TIF increment to decline as well until some of these other projects begin to make up for that decline. So our TIF incremental revenue, while we budgeted about 329,000 for 17, and I, I'm not sure we'll collect all of that because my guess is there'll be an adjustment coming through from the PAB board that will reduce that. But at this point, my best guess is we might have 102,000 of TIF increment revenue in fiscal 2018. So I think, I think that story in itself explains probably why TIF is necessary because we're seeing that area lose value and we need to be able to provide incentives to get it back up to where it should be. This year, we also provided to you the actual state certification forms, which pretty much say the same thing. They're presented in a little different format. If anybody has questions about any of that, we can discuss it. Otherwise, Noel would love to tell you about what projects are going on in that area. <laughs> Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. Obviously, a lot of the Crossroads area is already uh, built up in many areas at the same time if you are, are familiar with the boundaries of it um, we also took that down to Shawless down near the uh, Cap uh, Isle of Cap Capri uh, casino area um, because of the potential out there for uh, added retail and added uh, development um, we obviously have a lot of smaller projects going out there with the Depaco with the, the Chick-fil-A and some restaurants one of the larger some of the larger things we're also seeing in that general vicinity um, is a lot of housing development um, so there's some infrastructure improvements that we'll be looking at on the southeast um, area to continue to see um, the, the connection between that residential to the commercial area that we want to see grow. Um, as you may recall, as part of the Hummingbird Circle development, uh, we had some neighbors asking for a second outlet out of there. So we'll be looking at potential locations kind of on the southern ring of Crossroads. Uh, street as to where we would connect a road to the south and of course going across the drainage way there would be quite expensive um, Some of the other things we have uh, funds in fiscal year 18 of about 800,000 dedicated for the Laporte Road uh, Corridor that'll really go from about Hawthorne or up near the bowling alley down to Shawless again We're looking at that. There's a lot of places in there where we have a lot of lanes um, and then some other places we don't have enough lanes and we're just looking at the optimal configuration for retail development, lot development along there. So we'll have a lot of infrastructure costs coming up as the area continues to develop, especially around that southeastern part of, of Crossroads. Mr. Mm -hmm. Is the, so all the new housing out there is in the Crossroads TIF? 
That is not in the TIF, no. Okay. You we, we went around the residential. You but we want to make the connection to to that area. Oh, I thought you said it was in the TIF. No. Okay. And then, uh, okay. So, the, from the port where Hawthorne to Shaw's, we're talking both sides of like Hess Road, that farm ground. Yes. And then the triangle by the highways. That'd be correct. Okay. Anyone else? No, behind the casino, basically. Is the casino in the tip? No. Oh, I'm sorry. The question was, is the casino in? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm looking to the staff, and I don't. It was not originally. I'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. I don't recall if we went around that or if we included it. I thought who, we went. I thought we went, went around it. Who keeps protesting their taxes out there? It's killing us. Crossroad Center. Oh. Yeah, they can see a couple years back. Crossroads was contesting that the value was that the value that being assessed was less than what the place was worth, or yeah. more than what the place was worth. Yeah, and they they're doing it again. Been lowered twice, and they're going for a third time. Next section. Okay, the next one is downtown, which is I understand pretty hot off the presses. Um, so cumulative total debt to date in downtown, and this is quite an old TIF, so it's a fairly significant number. Sixty-four million. $597,967 in total debt that has been spent over many, many years. Um, cumulative revenue to date is through 16 is 35 million six hundred thirty nine thousand one ninety nine. So this TIF has the most debt yet to repay of any. The net remaining to be repaid is $28,958,768. Mm -hmm. um, we do have some very large projects that we anticipate coming online in the next two to three years that will help generate increment that will help retire this expense. Are we losing value downtown in the increment? Um, it's it's been up and down. I believe now we are going to start to be on an upward trajectory, which will be very good. I think that this is another very good illustration of what has happened, particularly over the last 20 years in downtown. I can tell you be about 20 years ago, before we really started on the downtown campaign to clean and green, if you remember what downtown looked like, it's a very different place today. So a lot of those investments, I think, are beginning to pay off, and we're just kind of at the the brink of where we'll start seeing that coming in. But this is one of those TIFs that never end. It's, it's an urban renewal TIF, so it is about urban renewal. Um, and, you know, if, if it's all renewed, I guess is the word, you, you wouldn't need to keep doing it. But um, that's difficult to do, particularly in our climate with roads and just the things that change. So, Noel, do you want to talk about more things? Thanks. As Michelle touched upon, I mean, we're starting to see some great projects there, but there's been a lot of, of costs associated with that, just trying to get th some things ready. Um, Eric, can you get me a map, too? Um, I saw he was leaving without it. You know, I. I the tech works is finally starting to move ahead um, at a very positive pace, but of course we have some some more work to be done there with the marina um, for the IRD concept. Um, but you know, in the past we put through West Commercial Street to kind of divide up that former large deer campus to create the tech work site, um, put in a lift station at, at cost to the city. Um, you know, the good example of of projects again. It just it's a redevelopment so much more than. Then the Greenfield sites, uh, the Grand Crossing site, we bought the former Grand Hotel. We had demolished that, removed asbestos. It was 
it was very costly to do all of that, but we're going to, in the end, turn that $1 million taxable value property into probably about $18 million worth of taxable property by the time you get all three phases there. Phase one's nearing completion. They've taken out permits for phase two, which will be a second building with commercial and retail, and we're already working on, on a phase three. But again, the phase three, there's some DOT land in there. There's some environmental concerns with that land, so we're spending money, spending time to try and get that into a redevelopment site. Um, of course, we did a lot of redevelopment with the Sportsplex as an attraction to help bring uh, more housing down there as well. Um, and of course, the developers are responding. Uh, we did get uh, awarded state tax credits for Brent Dahlstrom, a local developer, who will be building at the flea market site and at the upper plaza site um, in the, the, probably this next spring to summer. Um, so again, there's another 100 residential units downtown, multi-story buildings, a new skyline for Waterloo, new residents downtown, new taxable value. And I think all of that, all of that also then permeates into the older existing buildings like the Masonic Temple and getting residential buildings in there for, again, another building that sat there vacant or partially vacant in the upper floors for 40 some years. And we're starting to see those being redeveloped because of the other activities that we have going on. Mm -hmm. All right. And just while I'm up here, um, the casino is in the TIF district. Any other questions for now about this area? Next. Okay, next we are going to talk about the newly merged district. This is East Waterloo Unified Tax District. And if you remember, um, you all voted about approximately a year ago, I suppose, to merge the existing Midport district with Logan because we had some opportunities coming up and that will provide us a lot more flexibility to do that. So the landscape has changed with these. Our current total debt certified in this district is $26,076,817. Through June of 2016, we've certified revenue of $15,700,138. What was that number? The revenue? Um, let me get that back out here. I've already forgotten. <laughs> $15,700,138. R roughly. Mm -hmm. So our net obligations there that we still have to pay off total ten million three hundred seventy six thousand six hundred and seventy nine dollars. And you can s a lot of that is due to the development agreement that was signed with North Crossing, which is the activity occurring at Logan Plaza and some other areas north of there. which Noel's going to be happy to talk about. You know, one of the exciting things about Logan Plaza, too, is the fact that the Highway 63 project is occurring within it. So that's obviously we're, we're doing a lot of that and, and targeted that with the, the federal funds that we were able to get through the road dollars to try and improve this corridor for transportation for the residents there in terms of how it's laid out, but also for economic development. Um, and you can see that we're going to have a great new Hawkeye Community College campus at the southern end of that corridor, and then the new Logan Plaza development that's happening at the northern end of that corridor. Obviously with the Logan Plaza development, we have a large commitment there um, to help North Crossing buy that site um, at $8 million. Um, then we also will have a lot of land conveyed to the city of Waterloo for prospects to occur out there, whether that's working with North Crossing or with directly with companies or both. Um, but there'll be some more infrastructure needed, more water, more sewer, more road improvements as we move ahead to develop that whole area, really from Donald to, to Forth to Ralston to 63, and, and, and hopefully uh, as that area blossoms out, um, we'll be looking at across the street um, over by the hotel site and all that as Hy-Vee moved across the street to make their project happen. We'll have a lot of options out in this area and a lot of potential. 
I should be remiss in also noting as the Logan TIF district goes down the 63 corridor, it also takes the northern part of Franklin uh, Street is in actually in the Logan TIF, not the downtown TIF. So the KWWL project is a great project that we are able to help in that area as well. Uh, the CVS project and of course there's a vacant site next to that that we'd like to get some more commercial development in that Franklin Street corridor. So again, we're we're helping to, to redevelop the Logan Plaza as kind of our our larger development area, but we're also doing a lot of good infill redevelopment in there as well to help bring more commercial activity down near downtown and the east side. Any questions for Noel about? All right, next. These are going pretty fast. <laughs> the next one we want to talk about is Martin Road. We have a lot. Actually, we, I feel like we have a lot of activity going on in every TIF, but we certainly have a lot of projects coming in Martin Road right now. Um, the cumulative obligation that we have certified so far at Martin is $8,326,062. The revenue that we've collected through 16 is $4,613,932. So you can see this is much smaller than some of the ones we've talked about, the older ones. This one's relatively new, and we're just starting to get it off the ground. Um, the net obligation there at the end of June is $3,712,130. And this is considered an economic development TIF, so there are definite expiration dates. So we want to be careful, I think, with Martin Road not to short ourselves on TIF revenue so that we can't complete projects and develop that area because that's what will be probably best for the city in the long run is to have jobs and buildings in that area. Okay, Michelle, can I ask a question? So sure. when we just round numbers, we have $10 million in debt and $5 million in revenue. Where's that $5 million a week? Do we owe that to somebody? We promised that we just haven't spent it yet. I mean, it's just odd to me that- We haven't repaid it yet, right. Okay. So Martin Road is unique, and Noel's probably better suited to discuss this than I am, but we are working with a developer who's actually doing much of the infrastructure instead of the city doing it directly. And he agreed to be repaid primarily through rebates as other companies locate there. So we owe him a large sum that has to be repaid for all those streets and sewers. And that that area was expensive to get started because the sewer had to be put in from a long ways away in one direction. And is it the streets that came a long way from another direction? So there was just some areas you're able to build a street and a sewer and add a few lots at a time and get them filled and then move on. This area, because of its uniqueness of how you had to get things there, there had to be a lot of infrastructure investment up front that's taking a while to get repaid. So yes, we we owe the developer rebates, and you'll you'll see you know, if we go to the cumulative <coughs> expense <coughs> sheet, you should see on the third page there are rebates for the reserves at Ridgeway, M&K Electric, um, if you, and other companies that are moving there. We, they aren't built yet and we aren't paying them yet, but we will be paying them in the future. So we're, we're certifying them today. So those are some of the future expenses <coughs> that we're obligated to that we will be repaying in the future as they pay taxes. Does that answer your question? I think, so, but I'm trying to find on this sheet you're talking about uh, where the reserves is. If the reserves. Oh, the reserves of Ridgeway. I see it. Yep. Fit, when you when when I'm reading that, it says 50 percent. That's 50 percent of the taxes. Is that what it is? Yes, excluding debt service levy. So we so have, to, it, and it's also excluding the base. So there's a. We have to go through a whole form to calculate what they're really going to get as a rebate that uses a rate that's a little bit less than the total rate. And it's also the rebate value is typically less than the total taxable value. So there's a whole 
calculation that we go through. We typically pay them for the land, don't we? Typically. I think that's an old question. Give them a lot somehow. And on top of that, do we give tax rebates or do the tax rebates generally make up for the cost of the land? So, there, so there's a mixture in the Martin Road of, of city-owned land, uh, private-owned land, and we're primarily dealing with three different owners um, in the whole TIF district because it goes to the east side of 63, the west side of 63, and then you have north and south of Ridgeway. The northwest is where the city land is. Uh, the northeast is Brent Dahlstrom and his team and George Cooley. Um, kind of the southeast is Rick Young, and to the southwest is Harold Youngblood. And Harold is the one that we had the infrastructure agreement with. If you recall, way back in, I think it was 2003, 2004, um, the Greyhound site was kind of sitting there. All the land was owned by a trust in California. They, we had talked to them on the phone. They had absolutely no plans of doing anything with it other than letting it being farmed. Um, so the city made a deal with Harold to have him go ahead and basically prepay to put all the infrastructure in and get some things going out there and then the city would reimburse him as development occurs through the TIF rebates. Um, you know, as we're working with projects, we try to stay to the same economic development policy plan as we normally do to give uh, five years 50% or free land for projects under a million. For projects over a million, they're eligible to get free land and rebates. And a lot of times when they're buying the land up front and we're giving them the rebates back is where you'll see the rebates for six years at 70% or something is that is the pre paying them for the land back um, that they purchase up front. So again, so the city's not having to come up with money up front all the time or paying it back through that additional revenue created. Now, Rick Young put his own infrastructure in. He did. Um, and and he a lot of that was done before it was even in the TIF. And, you know, and this is a perfect example of, of why we have TIF. When, when Denzo first went on the city-owned land and the city bought that land, there was no businesses on Rick Young's land except for I think the hotel was sitting there and uh, might have been a come and go at the corner. Um, Rick was quite upset and said he wasn't getting any projects now that the city had land in the area with the TIF on it. The problem was that area competes very nicely location-wise with the Cedar Falls Industrial Park and again as a small businessman you could get free land in Cedar Falls or you could come buy it from Rick. So we extended the TIF over that private um, development and um, pretty quickly thereafter we got Wilbur Burial Vault, Rainsoft and, and some other projects to go out there right away. So it was, it was very helpful to Rick um, and to the City of Waterloo to gain more projects. As we continue in that area, um, again Michelle not noted that uh, we have some existing debt for infrastructure he's put in. You may recall a couple months ago the city did uh, another large, uh, should be the majority of the infrastructure out there of about 1.8 million in debt that he'll go ahead and put in this next uh, spring or part of it in the fall, part of it in the spring now um, to go ahead and build out the majority of the infrastructure. The reason I say the majority and not all, we're still dealing with, uh, of course, the uh, former dog track site out there. Uh, that's about 40 acres in itself. Um, so we'll be figuring out what to do with that as we continue ahead, um, whether we acquire it or something and demo it or, or work with a developer to do so. And again, that could be redeveloped into some smaller lot, lots, which would require more infrastructure and all that. As Michelle noted, that area was a little difficult to get started because all the sewer had to come from the south. Water and other infrastructure was coming from Ridgeway to the, to the northeast. So you're coming from two different directions. That's a lot of infrastructure just to get a couple lots going. Um, other things we'll be looking at, obviously, in that area um, is also, as you, uh, you look at the Young Land, uh, Marnie Avenue just stops down there. There's about 30 acres to the south of that. So again, there'll be some more infrastructure provisions in there of more road, probably a cul-de-sac. Um, and then as you get to the northeast corner of the main area up near the reserves, um, they're going to be building a road and platting some more lots. So we'll be doing things to try and encourage those for, for some more development as well. All right, Tim, you had a question? I have a question that's on the rebate. Once that's rebated back to Youngblood, that's just a one-time full completion rebate. It's not like a connection fee where we're continually paying them. How about yes and no? <laughs> it, we, we are paying him in installments over time, okay. so it isn't really a one-time thing. Well, but but once it's, it's not, once it's paid off, it's you're right, off. there's not it's, a connection fee. It's not like fee. a connection type fee where there would be continuous forever. 
Okay. Not necessarily. All right, no. thank you. Mm -hmm. There's a uh, building out there that I know got rebates, and I forget what the corporate name, corporate name is. I think it's that financial planning office. It's for sale now. Um, the rebates go to the new buyer. We often will do assignments. And then say that guy wants to build another building next door in the new 20-year TIF. Will he get rebates there too? If he's building a new building, he likely would because that's we're looking for buildings and jobs. So well, the more buildings make, they build, that's We don't okay. measure jobs, do we? We just measure value, don't we? I think informally we measure jobs. Do we? Probably should. Obviously, jobs are always part of the equation that we'd like to see. We don't, we don't specifically put any job requirements in the majority of the agreements because mm -hmm. um, we don't want to try to track them later. Um, or in the case of what you're talking about, uh, Councilman Lynn, if a company were to change and all that again, and, and let's say they build right next door and a new company comes in there and adds jobs, we wouldn't want to have to try and track how many jobs they actually had and then moved over here versus those coming in all that versus what the original agreement may have been at. And, and again, it's difficult to, to track jobs when you're not the state of Iowa. The state of Iowa tracks jobs, of course, because they get a lot of their income from, from income. And so they can track it pretty easily from where their revenue is coming in and all that. Whereas our direct benefit is the property taxes. Any other questions, Tom, Tom, or anyone for on this one? No. I just have a comment on it, but good. It's just, I think, you know, it's a compliment to everybody that I think there's a nice cluster effect going on out there right now, and it's probably one of our premier um, TIF areas, as I see them. Uh, seems to be a lot of activity with bulldozers and activity with building construction. Um, so I just compliment you that I think there's, a nice cluster effect that shows value in tips. Okay, we're going to move on to the Rath redevelopment area. This is another older redevelopment area. Um, the total expenses for this tip are seven million seven hundred and sixty-seven thousand four hundred seventy-two dollars through. June of 2016, we've received $5,856,44 in revenue to repay those <coughs> debts. So our net expenses still outstanding in RAF are $1,911,428, sorry. That's, um, we've done some work there on RAF and you can see all the the things we've done. That's one of the older areas of town. We've seen, we're beginning to see new things be built there. I think housing, um, it's probably been seven, eight years ago now that we had new houses built on our East 8th Street neighborhood. And those were the first new houses in that area of town in 80 years. So that, that was a significant development. And we continue to see improvements in that area. And Michelle, what does other revenue received mean? What's that common mean? It's currently it's primarily interest revenue. Um, I don't recall what that payment was back in two thousand seven. Do you remember, Adrian? Well, the total is thirty eight thousand. I'll have to get back to you about what that particular payment was. We just occasionally there's something unique that generates revenue that we're but the first about. column is the increment correct the first column is the property tax increment right yep the second column is generally interest in the downtown it, it also included some smid and some parking revenue that was dedicated i just i don't recall what it was in right off and there was just looks like there was just a couple of years there oh yeah but yeah we'll have to look it up <laughs> Just kind of the Reader's Digest version on the Rath area, of course, uh, the Rath packing plant went under. Uh, the city of Waterloo had loaned it money, and so the city actually acquired a lot of property through the bankruptcy. 
Um, we've worked throughout the years uh, with great partners out there with uh, Powers Manufacturing and Crystal Distribution and Crystal taking a majority of those older buildings and reusing them for cold storage. And um, you know, going back to just about 10 years ago, we tore down some older um, the maintenance buildings and the Cooper building that were kind of up near 18th Street there, so that Crystal could continue to expand with with their newer buildings and. You know, that's some of the things we'll, we'll continue to work with Crystal on at, for their campus build out there. Uh, we put some flood protection in place there. Um, was one of the major areas of the new stormwater lift stations that covers that area so that they can continue to expand in that area behind the levee system. You know, one of the things with their newer buildings versus the older buildings, they're gaining more cubic feet. Um, so they actually have more storage in that white building that looks like a large one-story building than they probably do in the, the six-story buildings at times. So. Um, we're continuing to work with them to renovate and modernize their, the cold storage facilities. Um, SJ Construction is a business that we moved down there onto some of the, four, the last couple of RAT lots that we had acquired through that bankruptcy. Um, we moved them out of a residential area into that more industrial area. So we tried to get a lot of industrial with houses next to it. So we tried to, to separate those a little bit to get some clustering of businesses in that area. And of course, the Human Services Campus which I know Michelle doesn't pay property taxes, but you know, one thing I'll say about that, we, we moved standard forwarding out there. They went out to the airport and built a new million dollar building. So we still gained there and added some employees, but by creating that human services campus there of the three main entities of, of the food bank of operation threshold and the department of corrections, that was about a $15 million investment to that area that really kickstarted some smaller lot development across the river as you go across 18th street which was built with rise funds and some other brownfield monies um, that really kick-started some smaller business development where we've been taking out some 657a houses or some other dilapidated houses and getting some small businesses built in there by the officials uh, by kent orchard and some others and a lot of them commented on the city's reinvestment into the rath area and the human services campus area that this was a growing kind of a smaller <coughs> infill industrial park along the highway 218 corridor near downtown so they're close to amenities so we think there's some good potential as we continue to work on this area um, and, and and work on the old quality mat site there's some other um, old marquardt site out there that again we'll continue to work on a lot of our costs in these types of areas are really looking at old dilapidated buildings and kind of creating new pads um, you know the riverfront housing here by the uniq building we own some old uh, crystal buildings that we actually traded with them for some land for them to develop on that we'll be demolishing that'll give us some more riverfront sites to get some more riverfront housing and more people down in that area. As Michelle noted, um, we've had some great success with some new residential construction there that's been aided by the flood recovery efforts and then by the neighborhood stabilization, stabilization program through community development. Uh, but we've really seen some nice uh, new infill housing there that we're hoping will take place and help us expand that. Any questions? Uh, yeah, no. Does it, how far does that go? Lost the time. How far does that go towards the city? Does that go to 11th Street? I can't make it out of the map here. Does that go to 11th Street? both sides of the river or just on the east side of the river? And it gets a little confusing as you're looking at these maps because there's some original areas and then some <laughs> expanded areas that's Rath. Um, but Rath, yes, goes pretty much to 11th Street or a little ways over to 12th Street and then that's Rath and then the other side is downtown even though they're touching. Um, and then as you, you get right around the crystal area, it's kind of that, that one in the middle that kind of sits there right off of 18th Street. And then it goes all the way up to include the public works facility and then down to a commercial street near Laporte. You can see the furthest east expansion here where, as well where, <coughs> excuse me, we extended it along Lafayette Street. We did that when we picked up the old Windor site, um, which is now owned by uh, uh, Denver Construction and they've done a couple of expansions out there. So again, uh, we've, we've seen some great success in those infill sites. <coughs> Questions. Next. Okay, next is San Juan. This is another economic development district. Also seeing lots of exciting projects coming here. Again, another younger TIF district. Um, 
so our total amount that we've invested there is thirteen million eight hundred eight thousand nine hundred eighty eight dollars so just over thirteen million <coughs> through June of 2016 we've received nine million nine hundred eight thousand seven hundred fifty dollars back and we one of the things I will point out we are obligated under an agreement with LNH farms to purchase more land and that obligation is not included on the expenses because the agreement the rate is not locked in that has to be calculated so there's several million more dollars in obligation that is not reflected on here so the net debt excluding the part I just talked about at June is three million one hundred thousand two hundred and thirty nine dollars And if you're looking at your map, the, the small square on there was the original GMAC building. Um, that's why this TIF was started out there, was to help get them to, to locate, and then we've expanded it from there, uh, really encompassing over the, the Ainsboro Interchange area, um, and then trying to capture all of that, really from Kimball west to west forth, north of Highway 20. But then as you're between Ainsboro and Kimball, or Ainsboro and 21, actually, on the south side of uh, Highway 20, uh, we, we really think that there's some good uh, light industrial and commercial type space there and you know one of the things we've learned as we were originally trying to compete for the target distribution center it was down to three sites I think there was one site in Minnesota um, and then two in the Cedar Valley one in Cedar Falls the site we actually had competing for that was the uh, was the airport site um, the feedback back from the target officials was that Waterloo needed to have a site along the highway 20 corridor for larger um, distribution type centers so we started to work on what's called the South Waterloo Business Park. Um, and of course, you're all familiar with the acquisition of land uh, agreement we have with LNH Farms. LNH has been a great partner in terms of agreeing to sell a large amount of land um, in one area over time. And what's that, that has allowed us, while we haven't got that large project yet, we've been very close on a couple of them, but it's allowed us to at least showcase that um, for this area um, and have that large presence out there. We're certifying that with the state of Iowa right now, um, going through and doing historical surveys, soil surveys, environmental surveys, um, preliminary platting of it will be coming soon. But it's a lot of things to show that it's shovel ready. As a part of that, you get put on kind of an elite list with the state of Iowa um, for larger projects that are looking for what they believe to have sites that have all the information ready for them to move quickly. A lot of the larger projects are on very short time frames for their site selection processes and you're basically trying to make it to the next cut every time you know they'll start out with 50 sites and go to 30 then go to 20 and we're trying to put some sites out there that we believe will compete for those larger projects um, as michelle noted for the martin area this one's similar um, as fate would have it Ainsboro has water and some other utilities there but all the sewer will go over toward tower park there's actually a sleeve under highway 20 so when we start to develop that south part of 20 we'll have to bring sewer all the way over from the Kimball area um, and then the rest will come from the Ainsboro area. Um, but uh, besides that large site, again, we've had some very great success with VGM in this, this area and some other uh, professional offices. Uh, the Green Acres Storage Building uh, was a multi-million dollar, 100,000 square foot building, which was a little bit of a, of a different type of use out there than the other office buildings. Uh, we had come up with a new zoning classification when we originally rezoned this called BP Business Park which allows for commercial and office uses, but it also allows for compatibly designed industrial uses. And what we were trying to do was, knowing that there's residential nearby to some of these areas, we were trying to soften that from a straight industrial zoning to a little bit better protected um, light industrial commercial type designation. And, and we think it's worked well to kind of put a mix of different uses out there. Questions? Mr. Mayor, this is, <coughs> this is the last one, isn't it? You just get it. Which one? Northeast. I'll wait till the end because I want to ask a question about the certification. Are you ready for the last one? Okay. So last but certainly not least today is a Northeast site, and total investments to date that the city has spent 
are $15,905,578. Total revenue that we've received through June of 2016 is $13,144,225. So our net, net debts in this district are $2,761,353. And again, we do have projects coming here that Noel will be able to share about. You know, the Northeast Industrial Park, similar to Midport, you know, each of our, each of our TIF districts have a little bit of, of unique um, and, and different characteristics to them. Our Northeast Industrial Park is our industrial area that really has the uh, capacity for heavy water, heavy sewer users. We also have rail out there. Um, if you ever look at our land use map, it's a big, huge purple blob on that because we really show a lot of industrial in this area so for concentration. And that's very important to some businesses as they don't want to be near residential as much as residential doesn't want to hear their trucks backing up at 5 a.m. and the beeping noises and all that they don't want residential next to them to complain about that happening. So a lot of them like that I idea of a large industrial area. Um, the Northeast Industrial Park, we have some very uh, good prospects out there that we're working on right now. Um, if you drive out there, the, the built industrial park area has a lot of smaller lots in it. The majority of those are full. We're, we're working to plat some more land straight to the west of that industrial park area across the creek. Um, the city owns the 50 acres there. Um, we have another 70 acres, another 30 acres to the south, to the southwest, southeast, um, near the new uh, uh, <coughs> waste dump site. Um, and with the lagoon out there, we, obviously we have some great sewer capacity. Um, so a lot of that, um, as we continue to grow and, and offer those lots out there for prospects, we will need to have a, a lot more of infrastructure put in in terms of water and sewer connections. We just did some of that at the northeast to that western area. Next, we'll be doing some grading to make it look like lots, make it ready for construction. We'll have to look at some road construction. We'll be applying for rise funds, but we'll also have to get water, sewer to the south and to the southeast across the railroad tracks um, for that land as well to be ready. And as we continue to work with great prospects out there, we're, we're very excited about this area. All right, questions? All right. Um, Taking a look at this and hearing conversation that's come from uh, the community, that's come from uh, a couple of our council members, and then taking a look at all the projects that we have, um, that we have to pay for and what we have potential to do, um, I'm hoping during the next part of this when we move on to our full council meeting and taking a look at this particular um, TIF district, I would ask uh, if we would be able to release about $300,000 of value from the Northeast Industrial Site. Um, we have several projects that are happening, some infrastructure things that we need to take care of, but I think we could safely release uh, $300,000 and we would be able to come up and still be able to do our projects for this year. So there's been a lot of conversation about that from council members. There's been a lot of conversation uh, with regards to the community, um, but if we want an opportunity to take a look at a, a, a safe area for us to be able to um, to to release some of that value, um, I would hope that the council would work and we can release about three hundred thousand dollars from this area without damaging further efforts. Um, any other questions, Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Then, then I notice we would have to file a form two by December first to do that. How, how do we how do we do that? Do we have to put it on the agenda? Do we have to make a motion? Because uh, uh, th this tonight we're only certifying all these uh, indebtedness, right? That's all we're doing tonight. So if we wanted to release some money. Oh, this, tonight these forms are what this where just, we would do it. This is just math, isn't it? I mean, this I is just. <laughs> yeah, I wish it were that simple, but, but no. But tonight, I'm saying tonight you, is the night that um, we want your direction, and I will add a form two if you choose to release the three hundred thousand in revenue. Okay, so we'd have to amend when we get to this TIF 
we'd have to make an amendment to release three hundred thousand dollars. Kelly, is that I how we do it? I don't know if it needs to be an official amendment, but we could. That'd be we fine. We have to do it tonight. We normally include it in yeah. all necessary documents, so we normally include it as part of the package. Mm -hmm. and that's okay. If it's, if it would, if you were normally doing it, mm -hmm. and it would just be included as an extra document, then that would be fine. We wouldn't need to amend the agenda. I think that works too. Okay. Um, other questions before we proceed? Um, I've got just maybe a couple questions, and that would be, you know, last week we had a discussion on $270,000, that was the round, somewhere round number, that would have released and gone back to the taxpayers for some project, whether it was cameras or back to the general fund for reduction in, is there a way that we could get now that we have a discussion of the northeast site, <clears throat> is there a way that we could have the county put on our tax rolls where Hawkeye, can, City of Waterloo mm -hmm. schools, and then it would be a TIF reimbursement number that could be placed on so that the citizenry starts to understand that as we release things, we're seeing numbers coming back. It may be seven cents, but it may be a dollar. We would have to ask the county. I, okay. I can tell you just from the experience we had with the public safety radio was it they struggled with how to make that be separate on the tax bill. You you all get tax bills and they're pretty full. Mm -hmm. So and those tax bills, you know, they have to do it for the whole county. So okay. I think they might find it too difficult to do that. But we could certainly talk with them about it. Four words. But it's another row, and then yeah. if we do it, and right. 10 other cities want to do it, then it's 10 rows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I can see why it might be difficult for them to do. They, they might be able to. I don't want to answer for them one way or the right. other. Well, the other comment that I'd make is I appreciate this. Um, it's helpful to me as a new council person to understand how we're helping our small business community with construction and infrastructure and bringing in small businesses and biz larger business or at least medium-sized business I think it's a it's great I'm willing to have the discussion and hopefully we have more discussions on TIF as we start to grow and we learn more about the benefits that we have so I'm willing to have those discussions to help the taxpayer in general but more not, not necessarily more important but as important how we're helping small businesses grow with the help that they can have take their commerce to the highway system or to the rail or however we get it out of town. We just want to have that and I think it's great. So I'm willing, I'm willing to have meetings however often we have to do them to keep me uh, abreast uh, whether I have them privately but I like the, the math portion of this and I like the fact that we're seeing some clustering going on in the community. So thank you. All right. <coughs> Anyone else for the cause? Motion for adjournment. Second. May a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
5 p.m. I'm going to call the Boards and Commission Committee meeting to order. Mr. Yes. Wood, please roll call. Mr. Jacobs? Here. Mr. Amos? Here. Mr. Powers? Here. Okay, what's uh, up? Mr. Chairman, I'd approve the, uh, the agenda and as proposed. There's a motion to approve the agenda. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, same sign. We have an agenda. Someone would please uh, take number one. I'd like to make the motion receive and file Mayor Hart's recommendation of the following appointment, and that's for Anessa Katazovic to the Boards and Commission Telecommunication Board with an expiration date of 11 21 of 2022. And this is a new appointment. Second. It's been a motion made with a proper second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Look. Mr. Chairman, make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion that to adjourn with a second. We are in adjournment. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are in adjournment. Thank you. Let's call the Human Resources Committee to order. Madam Clerk, could you read the roll, please? Mr. Welper? Here. Mr. Jacobs? Here. Mr. Morrissey? Here. Mr. Powers? Here. Mr. Lind? Here. Mr. Amos? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Motion to approve the agenda is proposed. Second. Check. Motion and a second on the agenda. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 I'm saying that motion passes. Uh, we have one request today. If someone would like to take that, Mr. Mr. Chairman? Said that. I did, Mr. Chair. Oh, you did? Okay. okay. Go ahead, Mr. Morrison. Yes, th thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve the request to begin civil service process and appoint one financial analyst for the finance department. Second. Second. Okay, there's been a motion and a request for this position. Any questions or discussion? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Lynn. This $100,000 position has been vacant for a year almost. I think this is a perfect time to stop the growth of our government. Um, we probably want this position, but we probably don't need this position. Anyone else? Yep. Yes. Michelle Wheatner, Chief Financial Officer, and I'd like to walk you through some of the documents that you got. You have a copy of the organization chart for the clerk finance department. Um, and uh, we actually neglected to put one part-time temporary position on here. We also have a part-time clerk who does the payment voucher filing um, because the clerk's office stopped doing it about a year and a half, a little more ago. Um, so I think I'm gonna kinda go back and start at the beginning because I have heard people in the audience who are not here right now, surprisingly, um, say that this used to be a department of one. I can't imagine when that was. Uh, when I started here, there were three and a half full-time equivalent positions in the finance department. 
Um, there was not anyone with a certified public accountant license. The auditors at that time, pretty, the, the city pretty much did a, handed them a cash basis financial statement and your audit firm converted it to an accrual basis accounting system. And so 16, 17 years ago, we were spending about $25,000 with the auditing firm to convert our books from cash basis to accrual basis. When I was hired, um, we took that in-house. I've done, a, I mean, I have a great team. We, they work hard and we do that. Then in about 2003, um, it, our, our regulating accounting standards board, the governmental accounting standards board passed what was at that time the largest change in governmental accounting that had happened probably ever. And we now, if you, if you would look at an audit from say 1995 when it was just a cash basis, all it was was a schedule of receipts and disbursements. We, this is the revenue we got, this is what we spent, that was it. Then we started keeping track of accruals, which is receivables, payables. We could no more stuff bills in a drawer and pretend we had a good year if we really didn't. <laughs> we had to start keeping track of all those things. Then in 2003, we had to start providing what I call two different sets of financial statements to you. One that is on more a fully accrual basis that's similar to a private entity. So we had to start recording our debt, the 100 million in debt that we talk about. Prior to that time, you didn't really necessarily see that in the audit. There would be a schedule of future payments. Um, so we, we record and we track all that. We are now recording all that in our financial system. Uh, that was not done at that time, couldn't be. And over the years, first year I was here, we had a total of 43 audit findings that came in our audit. Um, now, we maybe get half a dozen a year. And they're typically not earth-shaking <laughs> types of situations. But some of the comments that have happened over the year are things that we needed to begin reviewing billing. We do that now with our new software, and I shouldn't call it new anymore, but we do it. We have made corrections over the years. I'm sure it's into the millions of dollars um, because of having a separate second set of eyes <laughs> reviewing that type of documentation. And those are your audit firms. Those are independent parties that come in here and tell, suggest to you how to better manage your city. So the last nine months particularly have been very difficult for me. Um, this council on the day my father died decided not to fill that position. I have been working nights and weekends since July 1st to try to get our audit done. And, you know, every time any of our departments have changes in the department head position or the bookkeeper position, that creates more work for me and my staff because now we have to train all new people about the things that we need them to do. And the TIF reports we just spent an hour talking about, I'm sure some of you are frustrated that you didn't have them sooner, but planning who you did choose to give an extra position to last in the budget. They had one person leave that I had trained to do that report, and quite honestly, I've been working 14 hours a day the last week to get those done. This stuff has been affecting my mental health for some time, and in the last month, it's affecting my physical health too something has to change. So if you want a well-managed, I don't think most successful well-managed cities would think that a finance department is the right place to save a penny. I think you're very likely to lose a, several pounds should you choose to do that. Of course, that's within your right to do. Um, we will have to make some decisions about what things the finance department no longer does. I don't know how much any of you keep up on grants, but the federal grant system is changing. They want more accountability, more records. I mean, every time I turn around, somebody wants more or something. <laughs> and I, you know, I've tried to pick up all those extra hours myself. 
you know, most of my staff has young children. They don't want to be here after five o'clock and they aren't here after five o'clock. But it, it just isn't working. It's not in the city's best interest. And if you want a well-managed city and you want research and you want projects, then I'm begging you to provide us with the human resources it needs to accomplish that. Thank you, Michelle. Anyone else have any questions? comments <clears throat> so Michelle how does our finance department compare to like let's say the county's finance department is it about the same staffing relationship to the folks or how's that well I what's your opinion I don't on think that? it's um, a very good comparison compared to the county okay. we do completely different things I know some people think it's all government it's the same um, really isn't their treasurer's department I don't even know how many people are there that process tax payments um, so I, I really can't compare with that. I know, I mean, for one thing, when you're this short staffed, you don't have time to do a research project and just, gee, call up everybody and say, how many finance part do you have? Um, I think we're similar to Dubuque. I know when we look at many cities, we have far less. Um, we tend, we don't have bookkeepers in the departments, most of the departments. We do have people that were hired as clerical or secretaries that we then spend additional time with teaching them to do bookkeeping. Um, but that's that's what I know. I was curious. I, I know that you work 40 hour days and in that. But do you think that you've overextended your position in the finance department? You're involved in a lot of stuff. Other departments in the city? as opposed to just the finance department? Do you think you've spread yourself too thin? You know, it's an interesting comment. A lot of people say that. I guess if we would start hiring CPAs and park them in every department, then I could coordinate them and it would probably take less time on my part. Um, I generally am only involved when money's involved. It's, it's hard to... <laughs> It's hard to say I don't need I don't care about that money. <laughs> it's, I think it's you know, my job to care about all the money. Michelle. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Ms. Wiedner, are this position is this additional or is this in the budget that we passed earlier this year? This is in the budget that was passed. Um, we've had this okay. position since 2012. <coughs> So it is budgeted for? It is definitely budgeted for. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I hear oftentimes that um, we have to run city government as a business. I think if you look at successful businesses, not only in the Cedar Valley, but around this country, uh, the finance department is one of the least places that you want to try to cut. Uh, I think that there's a lot of value when you look at general accounting practices, uh, fines that can be occurred that are placed on, the inaccurate reporting back to the federal government because a lot of our departments get grant opportunities. Uh, the federal government's probably gonna start looking at pulling some of them back. So I think this is a uh, cost worth, it's already budgeted, but it's worth bearing to maintain the staff levels as requested by the CFO of the city. Thanks. <coughs> okay. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman. A um, couple of thoughts I have. You know, number one, I think over the last several years we've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, probably approaching a million dollars on computers and software programs. And as has been mentioned, that's being done in the private sector. But in the private sector, they do not grow uh, the employee roster. They use that technology to not continue to add staff. and. I'm very sorry to hear, Ms. Wiedner, about your, your health issues and your stress issues, and I'm sincere when I say that. Um, but I was elected to represent the taxpayers. I did not vote for that other position you compared to. Uh, other people did, but I did not. Uh, I know, or I'm now told, there are conversations going on between the city and other uh, government agencies for shared services and so my point is and i think this may be what one of the other councilmen mentioned too is now that we're to this point in time where some of these uh, discussions may 
result in some cost savings and efficiencies if we continue to hire staff all these conversations are going on we're locking ourselves into those costs and then the idea that we're going to have an impact on the levy rate and on the budget when it becomes budget time in a couple months isn't going to happen because we're going to be locked into these things and um, I would just ask you to do whatever you can do uh, from my humble opinion whatever you can do to, to take the stress off yourself to delegate some of these things if some of these things you you can't be there for other departments then put that on that department head but uh, I really think that we need to hold the line uh, not just on this position other positions too I understand it was in the budget uh, I didn't vote for that budget for that reason not this particular one but for several reasons so I I'm sorry but uh, I'm gonna have to vote no and and that's the reason for it thank you anyone else hearing none madam clerk need a roll call vote please mr. Welper yes mr. Jacobs no Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? No. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? No. Okay, that motion passes. Motion to adjourn. Second. second. We have a motion and a second on adjournment. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. Let's call our finance committee to order. Today is November 21st. Would you read the roll call, please? Mr. Jacobs? Here. Mr. Powers? Here. Mr. Welper? Here. Mr. Chairman, can I move the approval of the agenda and the minutes of November 14th, 2016, as proposed? Second. We have a motion, a second on the agenda and minutes. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those same sign that the motion passes. Trouble request, I believe we only have a couple there. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could. Okay. Uh, Wayne Castle, Wayne. Associate Engineer, and Philip Schubert, Stormwater Specialist, for, to attend a meeting and summit in Marion, Iowa. The date's December 6th through the 7th, not to exceed $170. Uh, Bob Ball, Chief Building Inspector, to attend a class in Wisconsin, or er, WI Commercial Building Code Refresher in Madison, Wisconsin. Those dates are February 27th through March 1st, amount not to exceed $1,205. Second. We have a motion and a second on the travel request. Any questions or discussion on those two items? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All right. All right. Opposed, same sign, that motion passes. Mr. Chairman, uh, pre-authorizations tonight. Building maintenance, $6,500. Repair roof drain in the northeast exterior stairwell that exits to outside at 5 Sullivan Brothers Convention Center. Central garage, $2,356.27 for a condenser auto charger for ambulance number 334. Leisure services, $9,290. Body composition scale. And lastly, sewer department, $4,500. One year of GrantNet software support plan renewal for the sewer CCTV truck, CMOM specialist, and CMOM tech. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on those four items under pre auths Any questions on any of those items? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion passes. 
Uh, we have three budget light item amendments, which are on file at the city clerk's office, and the bills payment. Have we got? Have we got a total? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I hope I have it with me. <clears throat> and the bills payment this week. $3,089,981.39. That's 3, 089, 981.39. Second. Mr. Mr. Chair, second on the bills, payment. <coughs> Questions? Mr. Chairman. Oh. Um, a question on the line item amendment, number five. What are we going to use that $60,000 for? Is it, Joe? Is it earmarked for anything or? Captain Joe Lyle with Waterloo, please. That would be forfeiture funds. The federal government regulates how we can spend them. Uh, so it's not really earmarked for anything. It goes into our, our forfeiture pot on our budget line that we can spend out of for approved, fund, uh, approved items. Thanks. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Well, same, same. That motion passes. Mr. Chairman, I move for adjournment. Second. Motion and a second on adjournment. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, welcome to our council meeting on this Monday, November 21st. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you please take the roll call? Mr. Jacobs? Here. Mr. Morrissey? Here. Mr. Powers? Here. Mr. Lind? Here. Mr. Amos? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Welper? Here. All right. Uh, full council this evening. Uh, first priority of business, I would ask uh, either you can stand or you can sit. Uh, this is time for our moment of silence. It is your discretion. So please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, we will have our Pledge of Allegiance this evening, which will be led by Ward 3 Council Member Pat Morrissey. Uh, please join me in the pledge. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, you may be seated or remain seated. 
Mr. Mayor. Mr. Welker. I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. And what we're doing is we're amending item number six. Uh, it is correct electronically, but in hard copy, it, we are adding, including the release of approximately 300,000 in revenue. So number six will read, a resolution approving certification to the Blackhawk County Auditor of expenditures that qualify for reimbursement, including the release of approximately 300,000 in revenue in the fiscal year 2016 Northeast Industrial Area Tax Increment District and place the certificate certification on file and also the minutes of November 14 2016 regular session as proposed second that motion has been made with the second question madam clerk oh all in favor it's a question. Uh, all in favor Aye. 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 opposed all right we have an agenda uh, now we have oral presentations and we have a speaker that would like to address the council. Um, Mr. Burden, if you would please come to the podium, um, state your name and address for the record, and then you have five minutes to address the council. Hi, my name is Tanisha Burden. I live at 1754 Newell Street here in the city of Waterloo. Uh, I thank God for being here. I've had a rough couple of years. Um, I am addressing you guys because there has been some lies posted in the newspaper stating that uh, the city has paid me out of the lawsuit that I just filed against the city of Waterloo and the police department. I have not got that settlement. I have asked the attorney Tom Ferrix, which was on my case, to withdraw because of sexual harassment. He has not released himself from my case. I also was a former uh, human rights commissioner here in the city of Waterloo and was withdrew, withdrawn, they said, because of absences, which at the time the absences was approved by the director, who as well himself has sexually harassed me. Um, I have filed a complaint with the mayor. I don't know what was, what steps have been taken. Um, the documents, I have all documents. I have everything that I need for my proof of everything that's happened. Um, there has been a number of times that I've been arrested after I filed a lawsuit, like seven, eight, nine. Um, that also has been dismissed. Um, I just come and I ask that justice be done. Thank you. All right, thank you. Jim Chandler, 224 Birch. Uh, I got a comment on uh, what was said last uh, Monday night meeting. Which I think it was Mr. Harris who said about using TIF money to uh, buy cameras to support our police department and the city of Waterloo. Uh, as a resident and a taxpayer, I'm 100% for that. I think our police department needs all the help they can get, and it would be a good sign to show these people that we are all of us serious about crime in our city, and I know we are, but I think the police department needs our help as much as we can give them. So I'm 100% behind the police department. Thank you, have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank, Thank you. you. David Dwyer, 3145 West 4th Street, Mayor and Council. Um, I've done some continuing research on the housing in Waterloo, which was brought up at a uh, uh, work session uh, last meeting. Uh, housing in Waterloo, we have approximately 600 plus or minus houses for sale, and of which 114 are vacant. Also, there are 8,000 plus or minus rentals in town with a thousand empty. You are discussing partnership with Hawkeye Community College to infill the 147 empty lots. Is this partnership, which could be taxpayer money, to fund a good, wise venture? Is this being good stewards of the tax money when the before stated figures indicate we don't need more housing? We need to just fix what we have. Yes, this looks good for the building going on in Waterloo, 
but in my opinion, poor administration of the money, of the dollars available is not happening. Yes, we elected you to take, to make decisions, however, we did not elect you to ignore us or what our opinions are. I have yet to see my elected official come to my door and get my input. Isn't this part of your job? Not just a select few, all of Waterloo citizens have skin in the game. Thank you. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the City Council this evening? Thank you. Motion received and file oral comments. Second. A motion has been made to receive oral comments. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda. That's items one through four. And within that are the bills payment. The bills payment this week is three million. $89,981.39. 3, 0, 0, 0.89.981.39. Second. Second. <coughs> motion made with the second. Council, any questions? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, number 1B2C, New Star Liquor License. They um, allowed a vendor that had wasn't legal be down there for several days does that jeopardize their liquor license by not complying with the zoning ordinances um, or doesn't it uh, could it could it jeopardize their liquor it wouldn't okay I see a no by the attorney <laughs> uh, it, it, it couldn't but um, I, I think I remember hearing something about good moral character um, but uh, I don't know if it has an impact on the okay. liquor license. All right. at this point. I was asked, and I told them I would ask the question. It is an appropriate question to ask. Any other questions? Uh, Madam Clerk, roll call vote. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Marcy? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. All right. So the how did we take these last time? Did we take them individually or a couple at a time or council? What's, what's your discretion? Several at a time. You, I can do the, I'm open. We could do the first four because six has changed. Right. We okay. could do the first four. All right. Will someone take two through five? Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Morris. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a uh, resolution approving certification to the Blackhawk County Auditor expenditures that qualify for reimbursement in the fiscal year 2016 Crossroads Waterloo Tax Increment District and place the certification on file. Number three, resolution approving certification to the Blackhawk County Auditor expenditures that qualify for reimbursement in the fiscal year 2016 Downtown Waterloo Urban Renewal and Redevelopment Tax in in Increment District and place the certification on file. Number four, resolution approving certification to the Blackhawk County Auditor expenditures that qualify for reimbursement in the fiscal year 2016 Martin Road Tax Increment District and place the certification on file. And number five, a resolution approving certification to the Blackhawk County Auditor for fiscal year 2016 expenditures that qualify for reimbursement in the East Waterloo Unified Urban Renewal and Redevelopment Tax Increment District and place the certification on file. Second. All right, the motion has been made <coughs> in the second. Um, we did have a work session about this earlier. Um, council, anyone, you have any questions uh, about this? Mr. Mayor, I just have one question. Uh, would th those uh, public safety cameras be a qualified uh, expense? So, so next year, say we do this, could we you know, spend the money on public on public safety cameras and the infrastructure and you know Michelle Wiener chief financial officer I we can check with the attorneys but I don't believe that's a legal use of tax increment financing funds okay can we find out for sure mr. mayor miss we'll Wiener I've got, a, I've got a question so I guess part of the question Michelle about that would be because these are different districts if part of that infrastructure were spread amongst the different districts, I could see where maybe that wouldn't work. But would the downtown TIF be a logical place to go to get money for something like cameras for the parking ramps? 
and if not, why not? In 2012, the state legislature added requirements to TIF rules. Um, one of them was prohibiting the use of TIF increment to build public buildings without going through a tedious analysis that there was absolutely no other way feasible to do it. Um, I personally and professionally would not recommend you try to use TIF to fund cameras at a parking ramp that's owned and operated by the City of Waterloo. Tax increment financing is designed, and if you read chap the chapters in the state code, it's designed for economic development. Um, some people could probably make an argument that the cameras are necessary for economic development, but I'm not sure that's... I, I think you're opening yourself up to questions that may not be in our best interest. If the city feels the need for cameras, I think that's probably appropriate for the general tax base to pay for that. But we, that's, you know, we can consult with legal counsel and, and get their opinion. Is that consulting legal counsel? I think that's what you originally asked. Yeah, I'd like to have a further discussion, I guess, with whomever, but uh, it just seems like something needs to be done, so I'd like to look for all options of uh, being able to finance that. <coughs> yes, sir. Um, along those lines, uh, uh, revenue bonds could, if we decided to do or could do a revenue bond for cameras, particularly in the uh, downtown area and the streets, for economic development reasons. Could those, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If we looked at revenue bonds, or can we do revenue bonds for cameras in the parking lot, downtown streets, uh, and be reimbursed because it's going to be help create an economic environment, could those be paid back through TIF dollars? It's only a question. So I mean, use our bonds. A revenue bond, right? Tiff dollars. I think. Well, I think the, sa the same thing. rules apply. Okay. So right. we, we could only do that. So with okay. revenue bonds, we I have we have not been using them much in the past fifteen years. We may begin to use them more because if we use revenue bonds, that doesn't count against our general obligation debt capacity. But if you use revenue bonds, you have to remember several things. We would have to dedicate a specific source of revenue for repayment. In the parking ramps, you, we could potentially decide to dedicate parking revenue to repay them. Revenue bonds are considered to carry more risk by the bond market. So generally, the interest rate is higher. Could be done, but we would, the net city operation would have higher expenses as we do that. And generally, we also have, well, not generally, we would have to have cash reserves. So if you need $250,000 to buy cameras, and I'm simply picking that number out of the air, I believe the police chief was supposed to get back to us with an estimate, and I have not I'll, heard I'll that yet. I'll talk about it in just a second when you okay. get done. Okay. So let's say we needed 250000 You generally have to provide a reserve of twenty-five or 50000 so you have to you sell more bonds. You you keep that cash in the bank. We earn less interest on it. So we're basically just increasing our interest costs. Um, but it, it certainly could be done. And again, the TIF, TIF question, we will have to clear through. I just wanted legal. that second question asked. So, so where we're at, um, <coughs> taking a look at our parking ramps, I've tasked Chief Troka uh, to get with some reputable folks that know about cameras, see exactly what we need to have in our parking ramps so that we can help mitigate any problems that we have. Um, there's been a string of situations that have happened. Uh, the police department um, has apprehended uh, some of the uh, folks that have been uh, involved in those situations. Um, but there's still a few out there that we need to get and so he's tasked with taking a look at that this directive went out uh, last week so it is the, ho the holidays are here this week so as soon as the holidays are done he'll continue to move forward and meet with some of those companies to see exactly what the cost is at the time we find out what the cost will be 
uh, then we'll have some decisions to make to see if um, the direction we want to take that. So that's where we're at currently with the conversation about the <coughs> cameras for the parking ramp. David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. Um, I see that it says uh, the Blackout County Auditor expenditures that qualify for reimbursement in the, in the crossroads and, and all of these other ones. <coughs> that reimbursement comes from because they're in a tax increment district, comes from TIF or it comes from the taxpayer? Michelle Wheatner, Chief Financial <coughs> Officer. The forms we're filing are what allow us to collect tax increment in those districts to be able to repay the expenditures. So it, it's tax increment that is used. Businesses. I, I Primarily from businesses that, yes. We have very few TIFs that are, are residential. Waterloo has not done a great deal of okay, residential. But that, I guess I still am in the confusion of is that tax increment collected goes to the TIF and then gets reimbursed to these people or is that taxpayer money that goes to these people to Blackhawk County so the city invests money in our TIF districts and we pay it out then we certify the paperwork we're filing tonight with the county which allows the county to take the tax revenue from the businesses the incremental tax revenue from the businesses in that district not the base we all still get the base but the additional new revenue from the new businesses <coughs> is taken and that's collected and deposited into the special TIF account. And then that TIF account revenue is used to reimburse the city for the expenses that were eligible to be paid in the TIF district. So, so indirectly it comes out of the TIF? Correct. Correctly. Okay. Yes. So it's not taxpayer money. We're not adding to increasing the TIF coffer and then taking more money out of our taxes. Thank you. Any other questions? Madam Clerk on two, three, four, and five. Roll call vote. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. All right, those items carry. Number six in Mr. itself. Mr. Land? Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution approving the cert certification to the Blackhawk mm -hmm. County Auditor of expenditures that qualify for reimbursement, including the release of approximately $300,000 in revenue in the fiscal year 2016 Northeast Industrial Area Tax Increment District and place the certification on file. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Um, questions about this council? Just a quick question and it's probably for Michelle. Um, generally we'd get 100 grand out of this. Uh, we're not releasing our full 300 we're releasing valuation and then everybody gets their share I guess the bottom line is 100 grand is that what we're gonna get that I am anticipating and you know you really realize these are all estimates at this point sure. the tax rates haven't been set by all the participating taxing bodies but if the tax rate remained the same as last year for everybody in the county we would probably get about 128,000 and all the other taxing bodies would get about 172,000. Okay, I just want to make sure people did, uh, didn't think we were going to get a windfall of $300,000. No. no, well, our windfall will be the 100 and about 128,000. Sure. And if if you're interested, um, had we done that for the current year that we're in, <coughs> that would have saved about $2.99 for each $100,000 in value so if you had a home that was assessed at a hundred thousand you would have saved two dollars and ninety nine cents but mr. mayor I think it's and I I appreciate your helping us move this forward I, I think it's just a 
it's a little step that we can all take to try to compromise the residential property owner mm -hmm. and the commercial guy and try to you know move the city forward in kind of a positive way I, I, it, it's a great idea we the more we can release from the tiffs the more successful the tiffs can become and the more we can release we're all better off mr mayor Yes, and I would just like to piggyback on what Councilman Lynn said. You know, it's been a topic of conversation we've been having, and uh, I understand this is just getting our toe into the water very uh, shallow, but uh, I think it's a great first step, and hopefully it'll lead to other opportunities. I agree. <clears throat> All right. Um, we are listening to taxpayers, so... Madam Clerk, roll call vote on item number six. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. All right. Um, could someone take um, seven and eight, please? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. Item number seven is adopting a resolution approving certification of the Blackhawk County Auditor expenditures that qualify for reimbursement in the fiscal year 2016 wrath area tax increment finance district and place the certification on file and item number eight is adopting a resolution approving certification of blackhawk county auditor expenditures that qualify for reimbursement in the fiscal year 2016 san martin tax increment district and place the certification on file second my motion has been made with the second. Council, any questions? <coughs> Madam Clerk, roll call vote. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. <coughs> All right, thank you. Um, <coughs> I just want to say, yeah, 9 and 10. Somebody take 9 and 10. Mr. Good. Mayor. Mr. Amos? Number nine is a resolution approving a contract with HR Green for a phase one environmental site assessment of city owned property, property generally located west of the wastewater treatment lagoon along the Northeast Drive in the amount of $2,900. Number 10 is a resolution approving a supplemental agreement number three with AECOM for a net increase in the amount of $14,500 for the belt filter press edition contract number 869 and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. A motion has been made with the proper second. Uh, Steve, you want to talk about uh, the net increase for us, please? Okay. Uh, Steve Holmbrecker, Waste Management Services Director. Uh, the change order that we have, or the uh, contract supplemental agreement that we have in front of us is for additional services performed by AECOM as we close out this project. It, it essentially tailors with uh, change order number two to the contractor finishing this because of extra time they incurred as we've had uh, that change order involves some uh, existing gas piping and appurtenances that, that have deteriorated to a point that they need to be replaced. So they had to they incurred more services to final out that project and then and as time. A, if there's additional questions with a little more specifics, A and Com representative I see is here. So, All right. I, I would just add that they did try to. As we went through the project, if they could have covered it with the existing, they were trying to do that, and they got to the point and approached us and said we were not able to cover costs with the previous amount, so they've been allocated for this project. Mr. Mayor, if I could ask Ms. Home Record Number Nine, the purpose of the Phase One assessment. What are we? Uh, building something there, or what, what's our? Oh no! If you don't mind, uh, I'll defer to Noel. He's one to put this one. In. I think I know what it's about, but you might mind. get a better answer out of him. He doesn't have the tie on either, so it's bad news. Oh, yeah. it pains me too. <laughs> Noel Anderson, Community Planning <laughs> Development Director. Um, we do have a prospect looking at this area. Um, we're down to a very uh, low number of sites that they're uh, looking at in different states. Um, mm -hmm. The other, uh, the other. Competing sites had phase ones on it for the company to look at, so we thought it was well worth the risk to go ahead and have this uh, now and into the future um, to have the site uh, look better and hopefully we'll get the project. And, and I think it's, I think 
when we take a look at economic development, um, the ability that we have to handle some types of capacity out there gives us an advantage over other uh, cities within the state. And so this further research will help us to know exactly um, where we're at moving forward. But I guess when I started, I didn't know that um, waste was an economic development tool that we can actually uh, utilize to attract businesses. So I think it's a, a, a great thing. So thank you for your question, uh, Councilman Jacobs. Other questions, 9 and 10. Uh, Madam Clerk, roll call vote. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. All right, Number 11. <coughs> Mr. Morrissey. I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the second time an ordinance providing the general property taxes levied and collected each year on all property located within the newly expanded Martin Road Development Plan Area in the City of Waterloo, County of Black Hawk, State of Iowa, by and for the benefit of the State of Iowa, City of Waterloo, County of Black Hawk, Waterloo Community School District, and other taxing districts be paid to a special fund for payment of principal and interest on loans, monies advanced to an indebtedness, including bonds issued or to be issued incurred by said city in connection with said urban renewal project. Second. On the Martin Road Development Plan Amendment Number 5 expansion area to expand the boundaries of the TIF area. Second. The motion has been made with the second. Um, council, any questions? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I have a couple little questions. There's a little little box down on uh, 63 that we took out and that we didn't put it back in why we why, why do we not put it back in down here way down the bottom it just because the landowner didn't want it back in or Eric Schrader city planner uh, no it wasn't a discussion with the landowner actually that when we originally uh, amended and expanded the Martin Road TIF um, in that area. Um, it was not caught that that's an irregular shaped parcel that's actually uh, split by the former railroad, now a um, bike path that goes through there. The uh, requirements do not allow for a parcel to be split by a TIF boundary. So this is a cleanup measure. We could have cleaned it up by either adding the other part of the parcel on the other side of the bike trail or by removing this parcel at this point it was easier um, to clean it up by just removing it we don't have any proposed project in that area at this point in time yet anyway so it was a cleanup measure from an oversight in the other amendment that accidentally split the parcel then i got another question while you're there um just so i understand so the <laughs> the development that's going on out in that area right now the new couple new buildings and all the infrastructure improvements that's going to add to the increment and that will be 20 years before that's released back to the general fund any new increment in the areas covered by amendment 5 which is primarily currently vacant land um, that would be new increment then would have a 20-year sunset but that's my that's my point a lot of that some of that land out there is not vacant there's buildings being put up on them and what we're doing is resetting the clock on those guys for 20 years the only one that's currently under construction that I'm aware of is Hawkeye stages what about Google's and Google's okay there's two Okay. Is that in, in maybe this is a legal question? I, I assume we've checked with legal counsel, made sure the rules allow us to reset the clock? Yes, they, they even though they are under construction, they have not completed construction and have not met their minimum assessment <coughs> uh, requirements within the approved development agreements. All right. Does that answer your question, Tom? Yes, sir. Any other questions? <clears throat> Here I are again, David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. My challenge to you to improve Waterloo is putting public safety first. This is, this as well as high taxes is among reasons people aren't moving to Waterloo. A systematic release of TIF money 
in my opinion, will not crucify TIF. The number of acres in this TIF that are not and have not been filled over the last 20 years <coughs> shows to me we need, we don't need to have so much available. How can any of you not be behind public safety? Let's say we don't release 50%. Find some amount you can agree on to put towards public safety. Seems like every time someone wants a special, specific property, we jump through hoops so we can make that available to them by we buy it and give it to them for a dollar. Uh, if they want it because it is such a prime location, let them buy it. Uh, not us buy it and give it to them. Don't expand TIF, reduce it and fill in what it is already there. Again, how can you be against public safety? Approving this is a vote against public safety in my opinion. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Dreyer. Are there any other questions? Madam Clerk, roll call vote. <clears throat> Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? No. Mr. Amos? Yes. All right, this item carries. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Morrissey? I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Motion has been made with the second. Um, um, Madam Clerk? Mr. Wilper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? No. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Lind? No. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? No. All right. We'll pick it up next week. Uh, can someone say, uh, are we able to do both of those? Yeah, I would. 12. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Schmidt. Item number 12 is a motion approving change order number 3 with Modern Builders Inc. of Janesville, Iowa for additional interior improvements to hangar number 4 occupied by Sweeter Aircraft Services at Waterloo Regional Airport for the replacement of electrical box, conduit, and the repainting of six doors in the hangar bay in the amount of $975 and authorize the mayor to sign the change order document. Second. My motion has been made with a second. Do you need any explanation on this, Council? Madam Clerk, we're all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Madam Chair. <coughs> 13. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lynn. I move to approve revocation of Pedro's permit issued to Carl Grigg. Second. second. That motion has been made with the second conversation about this. Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Yes, I saw uh, on the attachments, there's a couple tickets, like a couple hundred dollar ticket. Mm -hmm. Is that a, uh, is that a fine? Is that a, I mean, will we collect that $200? Can we collect that $200? Or is it, is it a warning or is that a ticket? Yeah, there's, there are two citations issued as a result of this. I'm Dave Zellifer, City Attorney of Waterloo, Iowa. Okay. I don't believe Mr. Grigg is in the audience. Uh, we need to, this is actually a hearing, uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, and uh, under, under the hearing situations, Mr. Grigg, if he chose to show up, would be allowed to state his case. Uh, we have Maria uh, Downing here from Code Enforcement who issued the citations and who uh, was involved in making investigating this for us after he set up shop at Six Corners for the benefit of everybody here. There was a peddler's license issued to Carl Grigg, and uh, as we all later determined, he's the one who set up uh, the shop at the Six Corners area, and uh, we kept a good eye on him to make sure he stayed within the bounds of the law, and, and, and we felt that he wasn't, and so we notified him of that, and I think his landlord... Uh, ask him to leave but we can't really revoke the peddler's license without counsel we need your approval tonight to do so and seeing that he isn't here uh, I guess uh, Mr. Lind or whoever made the motion uh, for the revocation uh, we can go ahead and do that or if you wanted to any testimony or evidence from Ms. Downing that would be fine too I'm not sure which way you'd like to go on this but my recommendation would be since he's not here he was given notice uh, for someone to move and second revoking his peddler's license and we can move on. 
Schmidt. Mr. Schmidt. Yeah. So, Mr. Zilliford, can you tell me how did this person come to have the peddler's license to begin with, given what he was doing there, and why did it take us two weeks to get some resolution on that? Well, on we have to give him we have to give him notice and chance to have a hearing, and we have to see see what he's doing. Uh, our peddler's license was probably written about the time my my father was an assistant city attorney here, so it's old, and it's archaic, and it needs to be redone. And these are the situations that wake us up to whoops, we got to redo this uh, this ordinance. It's it's vague. It's based upon you know, the laws and the mores of the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. So. Uh, uh, we found out that he wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing. We gave him notice. We moved as quickly as we could to get this on the agenda. This is as fast as we could move, and, yes. and we did. So that particular corner uh, has a variety of merchants, for lack of a better term, that kind of seem to come and go. Typically, they're food. peddling food. Um, do we have oversight over that? Does the health department have oversight over that? From a fog, from a, all the uh, encumbrances we're putting on tax-paying restaurants, do any of those apply to these folks, or who's kind of keeping an eye on that? Well, yeah. As far as the fog goes, I mean, they, these were all self-contained. You know, they're operating out of trailers. They're not dumping their grease into a grease pit or anything like that. But those are all very good questions. I need to sit down with the health department and the city clerk's office and find out uh, how these people got there and, and what, under what terms they were there. I think it's a lot of it. It's just we don't know what other departments are doing. You'll see a vendor, like the taco guy or the ribs guy cooking ribs there, and you figure, well, he must have a license because he's there. And I certainly don't stop and check. Uh, but it, you know, when it's pointed out to us, we do. And I think that's something that perhaps we should start doing more of. You're correct. Uh, these people do pop up, and there's an assumption that they've gone through the proper channels, and we can't always assume that. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Mayor. Mr. Uh, Mr. Zellifer, I was wondering, um, is it, if this revocation w were to pass, uh, is it site-specific, or is it city in general, where the revocation of the permit applies the city in general he will not be allowed to have any other type of uh, peddlers permit in this city for at least one year from today's date okay and then the second thing is I noticed there was the two municipal infractions that were cited and each one had a different name on it how does that well there are two individuals working at the time and there's Mr. Grigg and another gentleman, I can't remember his name, but they, uh, they have a right to enter not pleas of not guilty and take this matter to court, and I'll try the cases if necessary. So the, so the revocation would apply to both names? The only person who has the uh, permit is Mr. Grigg. Uh, the, the peddler's permit is in his name only. Okay. The other gentleman was there unbeknownst to us, and when we found out he was there, we issued him a citation too. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank the council for the email, the continuous emails about solving this problem, and Anne Maria also for her diligence in making sure uh, we can move forward, take care of what we need to take care of. And I guess Dave too, but uh, he can't even announce his name. He's definitely the post. Ooh, uh, who is Whoever the guy is, definitely yeah. at the post. Is messing with it. But um, anyway, we haven't voted on this yet, so. Um, it, uh, Madam Clerk, roll call vote. Do we have to close the hearing? Or? No, we're fine. This, uh, has there been a second? I didn't hear one. There has been. Okay, there thank you. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. All right, I'm carried. Motion for adjournment. Second. Second. Motion for the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.